Hi friends! This road trip takes us east of Toronto along the north shore of Lake Ontario. We explored cities and towns, city parks, provincial parks, rivers, lakes, and waterfalls. Whitby was the first stop where we rode our bikes from the Lind Shores Conservation Area to Lakeview Park. Whitby is located 48 kilometers east from the city of Toronto and is named after the fishing town of Whitby in North Yorkshire, England. This is the Pump House Marsh Wildlife Reserve in Oshawa. We rode from here to Lakefront West Park and the Oshawa Harbour and through the McLaughlin Bay Wildlife Reserve. Oshawa's roots are tied to the automobile industry as the headquarters of General Motors Canada are located here. In Bowmanville, we followed the Bowmanville Creek from the fish ladder, which was built to help trout and salmon return to their birthplace for spawning, all the way down to the Bowmanville Harbor and Port Darlington Beach. We visited another fish ladder in Port Hope. This one is at Corbett's Dam on the Ganaraska River, one of the healthiest rivers in Ontario. People visit every weekend from mid-August to October to watch thousands of fish swim upstream. The Big Apple started off as an apple pie bakery in 1987 in Colburn. Over the years it has grown into a family fun destination with a petting zoo, food trucks, mini putt golfing and more family fun. It's hard to miss as you're traveling along the Highway 401. Presqu'il Provincial Park is located on a little peninsula in Brighton. Presqu'il Point is right at the end of the peninsula where we visited Presqu'il Point Lighthouse. It was built in 1840, it's 69 feet tall and is currently the second oldest lighthouse still operating in Ontario. We also enjoyed a walk along the Marsh Boardwalk Trail. It's an easy one kilometer loop through the Cattail Marsh with two observation towers as well. This is Trenton, Ontario. It's the main city in the municipality of Quinty West, where the Trent River meets the Bay of Quinty. It's the home to Canada's largest Air Force base and also the National Air Force Museum of Canada. This museum is dedicated to preserving and telling the history of Canadian military aviation. Inside you will find vintage and restored aircraft, and outside in the air park, even more military aircraft and monuments honoring those who served in the military. Here we are at Mount Pelion in Trenton, a hill of sediment created by glacial movement. The cannon is a British 
Royal Navy cannon that was placed here in 1880. The observation tower was built in 1999. Just south of Trenton is the island of Prince Edward County with nine unique regions to explore. We crossed onto the island at the Murray Canal, an eight kilometer canal linking Lake Ontario with the Bay of Quinte. The bridge at this spot is a swing bridge, which we got to see in action while we were there. It was a grey and rainy day, but we were still able to appreciate the villages and beaches along the way. We popped into North Beach Provincial Park. As you can see, it's primarily for beach visits. I imagine this would be bustling with activity in the summer months. Wellington Beach is another popular summer destination in the county. Our destination for this day was Sandbanks Provincial Park. It's one of the most popular provincial parks in Ontario and quite full during the summer months. But on this grey September day, we almost had it all to ourselves. We headed to an area called Lakeshore Lodge and spent much of the day here. We took out our bikes and explored the Lakeview Trail. It follows the shoreline of Lake Ontario and we were able to explore the limestone beds along the shore. The day ended with a sunset at Outlet Beach, the most popular beach, located on the east end of the park. On the north end of the island, there is a lake simply called Lake on the Mountain. We learned that thousands of years ago, Prince Edward County was completely covered in water. When the glaciers retreated, this body of water remained. It sits 60 meters above the Bay of Quinte and is one of Ontario's natural wonders. This is Birdhouse City, a lovely little community of birdhouses reflecting the culture and history of Prince Edward County. It was started by Doug Harnes, who created the Massasauga Park Hotel and turned into a community project where many schools, churches, and businesses were reproduced. Since 1980, it has become a well-loved attraction in the area.
Belleville is on the eastern end of Lake Ontario, the north shore of the Bay of Quinte, and at the mouth of the Moira River. We enjoyed exploring Belleville by bike. Napanee Falls are found right in the center of city of Napanee. It's a lovely Cascade waterfall at the mouth of the Napanee River. We were lucky to be able to stay right by the falls overnight right here. This is the Babcock Mill on the Millhaven River in the village of Odessa. There's a lovely little Cascade waterfall right beside the historic mill. It's a lovely place for a picnic and a walk. This is Lake Ontario Park in Kingston. We rode our bikes from here along Lake Ontario and up to Confederation Park in downtown Kingston. We were treated with a beautiful sunset back at Lake Ontario Park. And later that evening, we strolled through the downtown area. Just north of Kingston on the Rideau Canal is Kingston Mills and the southernmost lock station of the Rideau Canal system. It was interesting watching the lock attendants manually operate the locks so the boaters could travel through the canal. Thousand Islands National Park is a little island on the St. Lawrence River accessible only by boat. This is the visitor center on the mainland which was closed on the day we visited. There wasn't much going on but a pretty spot to stop and enjoy the view.
This is Brockville. We didn't spend too much time here on this trip. Next time we head east, we'll start our trip from this spot. It's a lovely city on the St. Lawrence River with lots to explore. Next time we will. After Brockville, we went waterfall chasing. We drove north to Merrickville to see the locks, some ruins, and some rapids. There are three Rideau Canal locks here in Merrickville, which are manually operated with a lift of 7.5 meters. The ruins are the remains of an old woolen mill which operated here until 1954. And here are the rapids behind the old mill, a lovely place to enjoy the water. The next waterfall was at Smith's Falls. It was a little anticlimactic as it was simply water flowing off the dam. We stopped in Perth, one of Ontario's prettiest towns. We strolled through Stewart Park. It was donated to the town of Perth in 1947 by Mrs. Stewart in memory of her husband. One of the conditions of the gift was that admission could never be charged for entrance to the park or for any event held in the park, or it would revert back to the Stuart family. The next waterfall was Healy Falls on the Trent River. This was also at a dam, but the fun thing was that we could walk across the dam and see the water right below.
And finally, Rani Falls also was on the Trent River. It's a little waterfall, but the fun thing here was a suspension bridge that crossed the river and into Ferris Provincial Park. A lovely ending to this Eastern Ontario road trip.